Gail? Susie? Are you ill? Shh, shh, just a minute, listen. What are we listening for? What is it? That's what I'd like to know. Gail? What? Come here. Why? Never mind why. What the heck is it? You tell me. What's, what's going on? It's only five o'clock. Shh, shh, just a minute, listen. Well, if it is, there's more than one of them and they've all got clogs on. More like a rat. A rat? It can't get out, can it? There's a loft door up there. Oh, don't worry about that. That's not been open since our dentist was here. Besides, you're not getting out I'm worried about. It's how they got in. It's funny we've not heard him before, innit? Hey, they can eat through anything, can rats, you know? I oh, saw a film on Shut up. Shh. I think they've stopped. I reckon they've gone. Oh, thank goodness for that. Yeah, unless it creeps out this big hole here. Which big old where? Oh, come on, get to bed, the pair of you. Still wish we knew where it was. Yes, yeah, well, as it's gone now, I don't suppose we'll ever find out. You were saying? Stan? Hey, Stan! <coughs> Stan! <coughs> There's something going on. Something going on next door. Can't you hear? Can I hear what? Noises! Oh. oh, put that flaming light out. I want to listen. What to? What to what's going on? It'll be somebody in clodgy you know, or making tea or something. Come on back to bed, it's the middle of the night. I, I can hear them girls and all. Oh, it's not right, you know, Stan. They've got no consideration. Come on back to bed! I think you should go, seeing as you've got your socks on. Go where? Next door to complain. Have you gone round the flipping bend? <laughs> now there you are, what did I say? I'll bet they're doing it on purpose. Stanley! Mm. Oh. <sighs> For some folks as wants to sleep, you know! I wish she'd shut up. She'll not till you tell her. Get lost! We're trying to get some sleep in here, Hilda! Oh. Look, I know I'm a bit dim and all that, but why would you tell me why did we have to move the bed? Well, you're not so near that cockloft door now, are you? Well, what difference is that going to make? Well... I'll find that you can't think. Well, I wouldn't like to sleep under it, I know that. Well, now, if you don't mind, and it makes no difference to you, do you mind if we move it back again, please? Oh, take the notice of her. That's it, just a couple of inches, that's fine. I don't know how you can be so calm about it, Elsie. Where's she gone? Search me. Now, if you don't mind... Well, I shan't sleep another wink, I know that. Oh. And I'm certainly not turning the light out. What's the joke? Well, whatever they are, they're running about all over our ceiling now. Oh, you're having me on. I'm not. What are we going to do? Nout until morning. You're not going back to sleep. Well, what do you expect me to do? Investigate whatever's up there. It can wait till morning. And now, ladies, good night and sweet dreams. Come on, kid. Are you sure you'll be all right, Elsie? Do you mean you or me? Elsie. I'm asleep. How full is she then? Hey. Hey. Dripping or jam? I said dripping half an hour ago. Just testing. Thought you might have nodded off again. I said toast. I wanted toast. Well, you can make it yourself. If you can't shift yourself before this, you can go without. I'll give you a shout at half past seven. You get waking me up. You're waking me up all flaming night. I did. Huh. What about them next door? All that banging and giggling and shuffling. I heard no shuffling. Give us some more, will you? There's none left. You know I'm thirsty if I have a bad night. Well, don't blame me. Blame Elsie Howard. If you hadn't woke me up, I'd heard nout. No, and you'd have said nout neither, would you? I know you. 
Look, it's not worth fretting about. Oh, I see. So when she comes round here to apologise, you're going to tell her she needn't have bothered, is that it? Why should she come round here? Because if she doesn't, there's going to be trouble, that's why. There's a law against folk what keep other folk awake after night, you know. It's called creating a nuisance. Hey, this tripping's funny. Well, have a good laugh and count your blessings. You're in a good mood this morning, aren't you? Do you wonder, with what I have to put up with? I keep telling you, I haven't got time, Susie. We'll just let him have a look. Oh, he'll have to wait till tonight. Now, where have I put my flaming purse? I had oh, it. Oh, it's on there. Oh, so it is, Tar. Now, look. Too late, darling. I'm here. All yours, there and now. Just pass him, he says he doesn't mind. Hey, what's all this then? Oh, very nice. <laughs> I used to have dreams about things like that, you know. There I was, standing in the street, minding my own business, when all of a sudden I was dragged protesting up to somebody's bedroom. Eddie, Eddie, I've got 30 seconds flat before I get my cards. Now, look, we've got somebody in the loft. Will you get up there and have a deco, please? Hey, careful, these steps don't seem very safe. Oh, now she tells me. How long is it since you've had this open? Oh, heaven knows. Eddie, for God's sake! To be false. I heard that, you. Suppose it is rats. Can you see anything, Eddie? How can you see up there? He hasn't taken a talk. Well, come on, come on. Don't keep us in suspense. Well, it takes a time before you can see anything here. Oh, hang on, yeah. And a rough guess, I'd say there's about uh, half a dozen of them all huddled together. Half a dozen what? Pigeons. Pigeons? Pigeons. Come here, you little blue so and so's. Start, love. Oh, ah, yes. Well, I have vacuum cleaned for a couple of days up there. But come on, what did you find out? How did them pigeons get in? Easy, there's a slate missing. Oh, how big's the hole? Big enough, obviously, and they're not flipping house trained either. It's, uh, it's just one slate, is it? Well, you can always find a few more when you start looking round. Mm -hmm. There's a few slipping up there. Tip marvellous. Just when you think you've got a mum free of flaming bills, that... Keep your flipping air on. It's not your problem, is it? Well, I can hardly see Gail and Susie breaking into the piggy bank, can you? I said it's not your problem, it's Hilda Ogden's. Hilda's? Yeah, the slate's missing an air part, you see. There's no dividing wall between the two, so they're able to come right through here, you see. Well, what are they doing in my loft? I mean, on my side of the... It must be warmer over yours than it is over the Oggies. Oh, I see. And because the hole is in Hilda's part of the roof... It's her responsibility. Will you tell her or shall I? Oh, I wouldn't put you to that trouble, love. I thought you might say that. Enjoy yourself. Oh, I intend to. Bye. Believe me, I intend to. Why should I apologise to you? Well, you won't stand up and all, you know. We never closed his eyes all night. Oh, come on, Elder. And shifting your furniture round. Oh, I, we heard you. Spring cleaning was your five o'clock in the morning. I never shifted it. Ah, oh, yes, I beg your pardon. The girls moved the bed two inches. I love 30. Well, there's such a thing as being a good neighbour, you know, not making a nuisance. Oh, yes, I'm glad you've heard of that, Hilda, because it comes in useful when you've heard of it. It saves a lot of time and trouble later on. What are you on about? I'm on about your pigeons. My what? You know what pigeons are, don't you? Love, they've got wings and feathers pigeons? that fly Pigeons? We've never had no pigeons. Well, you have now. Half a dozen, to be precise. Uh, they came in through a hole in the roof. There's a slate missing. Oh, I see. Oh, well, it serves you right, doesn't it? I mean, if folk don't look after things proper, these things do happen, don't they? Yes, that's very true, Hilda. That's exactly what Len said when he found the hole in your part of the roof. Huh? Yeah, the hole's in your part, but they prefer Elsie's loft. Yeah, got very good taste, have pigeons. I don't believe it. Well, if you don't get the step ladders and go and have a shifty. It'll uh, only cost a couple of quid, did you say, Len, to repair oh, it? Oh, I'll do it very reasonable for you, love. Well, you don't think me and Stan's going to fuck the bill, do you? Oh, well, it's your slate, isn't it? Now, Luke, we've never heard no pigeons. They don't bother us. So as far as I'm concerned, that's all can stop there. And if you think you're going to pull a fast one on me and Stan, you've got another thing coming. Game, set and match for Hilda, I think, ah, you? Yes, but she hasn't heard the last of it yet. <laughs> oh. oh, for heaven's sake. You know, you look like I feel. Hmm. Oh, make us a cup of tea, will you? Yeah, okay. 
Ah, oh, and she's smashing. Have they gone then? I take it you're retur referring to our little feathered friends. Yeah, have we got rid? Well, uh, not exactly, no. Why well, haven't you seen then? Well, yes, he came round at in time. It uh, appears as a slate off the roof. Well, that's right. We get the slate book back on again. Yeah. Well, it's not as simple as that, you see. Is there a snag then? Well, you might say that, yes. You see, the owl is an Ildrogdon side of the roof. So? So. She refuses to do out about it. Does that mean we've got to spend another night with them things scuttering around? Well, yes, it looks like it, doesn't it? Oh, I don't think I like that, Elsie. No, neither do I. Where's she going? Search me. I've got an idea. Supposing we put corn over the oggies part of the roof, then maybe the birds... No. No. What the heck? Susie! Susie, what are you doing? Wait for me. Susie! What are you doing? Oh, flaming thing. What are you doing? I, I'm going to put that paper in that and that tray in this hole if I can get this thing open properly. I've broken two nails already. Oh, don't be so daft. Come down here this Careful, minute. Oh, Susie, these steps are wobbly. You'll break your neck. Do you know we had a loft like this at home? Me and my cousin used to build a den in ours. Oh, isn't it dark up here? Oh, you soft things. I'm not going to hurt you. Will you come down and do as you're told? Will you stop nattering and give me a shove? You'll not stop her, Elsie. Right. Stan? Hey, Stan? What? Come up here, quick. All right. Is it? Well, it's not pigeons, is it? Last they've taken to wearing clogs. Where's in the loft? Oh, well, I know that cloth head. What can it be, though? Maybe it's Elsie Howard. What, up there? Oh! Hey, that's not Elsie Tanner's leg. It's too young. Never mind about that flaming leg. Have you seen the mess it's made? Oh, my leg! Help! Hey, I know that voice. It's one of them flaming girls from next door. Oh, I think it's young shoes. Hey, why didn't you tell us you were dropping in? <laughs> Don't just stand there. Do something. What can I do? Oh, Elsie. you great useless lump. Here, hey up. Oh, my leg. Oh. Oh, Steady oh, up. Get the leg out. Elsie. Hey, I'm going to have to sit him down. Oh, I'll have her down, little cat. Yeah. Oh. Here I are you all right? Does it look like it? What were you doing up there? The oggies are going daft next door. I've had a bit of an accident. Hey, you left one of your shoes up there. I didn't, you know. Well, you've only got one on. I didn't leave it up there. I left it in next door's bedroom. You are? Well, I was being dead careful. Honestly, I had my feet on those joysticks. I was going to put the tray in the hole and... Well, come on. Don't keep me in suspense. Well, my foot sort of went through the ceiling. Oh, my God. It was awful. I thought it was going to go right through. Susie, you hurt. Oh, I thought my leg was going to have its socket. She grabbed it, you know. She never. She did. That's why I lost my shoe. I'm alive, Just listen to her. She's going daft next door. Well, I suppose it could have been worse. How could it have been worse? Could have been your ceiling she put her foot through. Yeah, that's true. But you try telling Hilda that. You can't smash our ceiling down and get away with it, you know. Oh, just look at it. We never had out like this in the war. I don't think she did it on purpose. I mean, you don't go up and put your foot through the roof deliberately. Oh, it? that's right. Stick up for her. Never mind about me. I'm just saying it might have been an accident, that's all. Well, it's not to do with you. You shouldn't be in this bedroom in the first place. You yeah, what? I only came up to make sure you were all right. Look, I'm going to the men the ceiling, is it? Wow. Oh, God oh. love us. Oh, oh, oh. Don't get scared, Hilda. You're all right. You don't bite, you know. Not only have its book all over the place, won't it? Look, catch it. You and all stand get Listen, it's not as easy as that, you know. They have a deceptive change of pace. Make Kevin Keegan look sick. Come here. Cos you know what she was doing, don't you? Oh. That Susie Birchall. Oh, you only oh. saw a leg. It might have been Gail. It certainly wasn't Elsie. It was too young a leg for that. Look, it doesn't matter how young a leg it was or whose it was come to that. We know it come from next door. Now, they was trying to drive them pigeons out of their roof into ours on purpose. Oh, give over, Hilda. You can't hear them about. They've got a mind of their own, you know. Oh, have they? Well, so have I, and I'm going round there now to sort this Oh, no, out. you're not. I flame you I'm the man of this house. That's my job. Oh, but look here, No sir. buts about it. You put the kettle on. That's your job. All right, sir. Give me that shoe. He means business, doesn't he? He's gone there. All resolute. <laughs> oh, he can be masterful when he once can stand. Dead masterful. 
I told you to be careful where you were treading before you went up there. Oh, I was being careful. Oh, yeah, that's obvious. I wonder, I wonder what would have happened if you hadn't been careful. You'd have fell right through the uh, kitchen. <laughs> what are you giggling about? I can't help it. I keep seeing them standing there and Susie's foot coming through the ceiling. Oh, it wasn't fun. I thought my end had come. <laughs> I know, but just imagine standing in your bedroom with somebody's foot coming oh, through the ceiling. Oh, give it a rest. You won't be laughing when Andrew Arden comes round here breathing coals of fire. And here she is now. Stand by to repel borders. <laughs> Now, you know why I'm here, don't you? Hello, Stanley. Isn't Hilda with you? No, she's not. She's our place cleaning the mess up. Our bedroom's like a battlefield. Dust, feathers. Been having a pillow fight, Mr. Arthur? That'll do. Hilda isn't hurt, is she? Oh, no, she's not hurt. Oh, well, that's the main thing, as long as nobody's injured. The main thing is the damage to our house. And who's going to pay for it? Who will, Mr. Ogden? Her who put her leg through our ceiling. Don't you know who it was? Well, it wasn't Elsie. It wasn't her leg. Oh, I didn't know you'd made a study of my leg, Stanley. It's one of your two borders. And I'm going to find out who, because I've got the shoe. Oh. Now, come on, try it on. Oh, I feel like Cinderella. Oh, does that make me one of the ugly sisters? <laughs> Stanley's Prince Charlie. Listen, this is serious. <laughs> I want to know who did it. All right, all right. It was me who put my foot through your ceiling. Ah, good. Now, you can pay for it, can't you? Oh, um, well, who is going to pay for this? What? I could sue you and Hilda, you know, for having a dangerous ceiling. If it wasn't dangerous, I wouldn't have gone through it. Rubbish. You can't go around with a highly dangerous ceiling, Mr Ogden. It's illegal. They brought out a law about it last mm. year. Well, you shouldn't be there in the first place. Oh, now, come on, fair do, Stanley. It was yours and Hilda's fault in the first place. If you'd have fixed that roof like we asked you to, to stop the pigeons from coming... That didn't in, bother us. Well, it bothered us, so we had to do something about it, and we did, so it's your fault, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Here, here. Oh, look, hang on a minute. Now, listen. If I'm injured for life, you'll pay plenty. Plenty? Yeah, definitely. You haven't heard the last of this. Don't think you have. Hey, what? can I have my shoe back? Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Shot down in flames. <laughs> so it warms. Can I drop my tea? No, there isn't any. You can just go through it all again, cos I can't make head or tail of it. You see, it's very important, Stanley, what is exactly said by both parties. It's like here uh, after a motor accident, you see. How do you mean? Well, look, say you get knocked down by a car, right? And the driver comes up to you and says, Are you all right, mate? And you say, Yeah. Well, that's it. You haven't got a chance, have you? Cos if you drop dead the next day, you haven't got a leg to stand on. It's not like that. It is. That is why solicitors <coughs> on the top of their letters always put, without prejudice. That is their way of saying, we are admitting to nothing. Well, I admitted to nothing. I haven't done anything, had I? No, I see what Eddie's getting at, though. Now then, did Elsie Tanner say that she'd pay us the damage in full? Uh, well, not exactly. Well, words to that effect? Not exactly, Chuck, no. Oh, she must have said summit. I mean, she can't deny it's her fault. Or her lodgers, it's the same thing. Well, not necessarily, Hilda, not in the court of law. Oh, look, you shut up. We know all about you and courts of law. Oh, thank you very much. That's very nice. Well, uh, she did say she expected to uh, pay my off us. You what? Well, for the ceiling, you know, the roof being bad, letting the pigeons in. <laughs> I might have known. I should never have let you go round there. You're not fit to go down the road for five pounds of spuds. I'll go and sort this lot out. And if Elsie Tanner thinks she can fob me off like she did you, she's got another thing coming. How's your foot feel now? Oh, it's all right. Just a bit tender around the ankle. Yeah, well, if it was going to swell up, it would have done so by now. See you there, Miss Girl. Right. Now, what's all this hard-faced cheek about you not paying for our ceiling? Now, just a minute, Hilda. I will not just a minute. I've come here for satisfaction and I'm going to get it. Oh, well, just cool down. Not coming here barging the odds. You barging in? Well, I like that. But somebody in this room come barging into our house by way of our ceiling. That's how they come barging in. Yes, OK, OK, but can't we sit down and discuss it, can't There's we? There's to discuss. You and your flipping lodgers came into our house by way of the roof space and one of you stuck your foot through our ceiling. Now, you can't deny it because we've got a shoe. What can't speak can't lie. Well, you're only up, There's baby. plenty of evidence all over our bedroom floor. Now, hang on, Mrs. O. And you shut up. I'm talking to the organ grinder, not the monkey. <laughs> Just <laughs> sit down a minute, will you, Hilda? You're going to pay for that ceiling. I don't care whose foot it was. You can sort the bill out between I... you, but you're going to pay. No intention of paying for anything until oh. you simmer down. You're going to pay for that ceiling, lady. I'll not be bullied in my own house. Hey, now, look, Hilda, if you'd have got that slate fixed in the first place, you wouldn't be in this mess now, would you? You keep out of this, Lamper. I'm only saying that if you got the slate fixed and got rid of the pigeons, you wouldn't be like this now. Oh, well, of course, we all know whose side you'll be on, don't we? You fancy one. Oh, oh. oh. that's it. <laughs> now get out of my house and I'm get a promise. Get out of my house. Don't you leave me alone. Go on. 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 Go on.
laughing at. <laughs> it's not funny. Come to your Uncle Eddie. Come on. Chug 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 chug. Oh, will you shut up a minute? I can't hear myself think with you going on at that bird. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to be constructive, that's all. Try and salvage something from that accident. You said you'd go around and, and sort things out, didn't you? Because I'd make a muck of it. But you've done no better than me, have you? Yeah, well, I'm not finished with her next door, not by a long way. Look, she'll never pay. Why is it the Ogden's always getting a mucky end of the stick? You know what your best chance is, Hilda? You'll have to sue young Susie. That's your best chance. What exactly would we sue her for, then? Well, for a start, there's trespassing. I mean, it was your roof space she was in. Then again, there's breaking and entering. Well, perhaps not entering, it was only one foot. But certainly, damage to property. You've got a cast iron case there. No, no, I look at a sick like cast iron, come too. On, come on. Oh, what the heck are you doing? We'll never get rid of them if you feed them. I'm trying to fatten it up. They're delicious pigeons, you know. I'm not interested. Hey, that's an idea. In the roof. Feed them. Fatten them up. Certainly. It'd be just like having a few ends in your back garden. I haven't got a back garden. No, but the roof space, that becomes your back garden, doesn't it? Oh, look, we're not eating them and that's final. Now, will you two stop mithering about blooming pigeons and think of a way to make her next door pay for our ceiling? She'll never pay, never in her life. Yeah, forget it, Hilda. Your best chance is to turn the other cheek, be a good neighbour, like it says in the Bible, you oh, know? Oh, never mind what it says in the... Hey. It says somewhat else in the Bible and all, doesn't it? It says, an eye for an eye... And a tooth for a tooth. Yeah. That's what it says. And that's just what they're going to get. Get it shifted. Give him hand, Daddy. Right, oh. come on, Stan. Oh, 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 they're back. Oh, I can't go in that loft, love. If that's any idea. No, it isn't. I'm going up there myself. Hey, the spiders up there, you know. I don't care. Here, hold that steady. Don't be hasty, Ella. Don't be hasty. Now then, Stanley, never stand in the way of a woman when she's determined. There's spiders up there as big as your fist. I don't care if there's flipping cows grazing. Oh. Be careful. Oh, it's a bit high up here, isn't it? Oh, go on, Hilda. You can do it. In room. Yeah, I must confess, you don't get deco like that in the Midland Hotel bedrooms, do you? When were you last in a Midland Hotel bedroom? I refuse to answer that on the grounds it would definitely make you jealous. I wish I'd have had this in my hand when she shoved a long handled broom through the ceiling. I'd have chucked it out of that fast. You'd have made a bigger mess. I still don't know why you didn't go straight round there. I just possibly might have murdered her. Hilda Ogden's a nutcase, has to be. Who else would go poking holes in people's ceilings? It's Stan I feel sorry for. Fancy been married to her all these years. Yeah, all right. Well, while you're feeling sorry for Stan, I'm nearly dying here quietly with lumbago, not to mention sciatica. Oh, there's not that much of a draft coming through. Oh, no. Well, in that case, tonight you can sleep in here and I'll sleep in your bedroom. No, Tom. It's not the draft just frightened of. It's pigeons. Now, look, the way I've stuck that brown paper on there, no pigeon could possibly fall through. It is three sheets thick. I don't care how thick it is. I shan't sleep a wink until it's properly plastered over. All you've got to do is call Lenin. That is not all I've got to do. I've got to pay, find out how much it costs and who's going to pay for it. Oh, well, she is. Obviously, she did it. Well, you go round there and try telling her that. But she did. She did it deliberate. I mean, she can hardly crack or she felt like a stroll round the loft. No, Hilda's got to pay. It's only common sense. That woman and common sense are total strangers, always have been. You're not going to let her get away with it. Look, she's got a hole in her ceiling and she says it's our fault and we ought to pay for it due to big-footed Flossie here. Oh, no, that was an accident. I was trying to get rid of the pigeons. She says it's your fault in that case you've got to pay for it. Yeah, well, that's her fault and she should pay for it. Well, then that's 50-50, isn't it? So, all right, she pays for the hole in her ceiling and we pay for the hole in mine. We? We. We. I'll say it with the best moment in my life. But it's among them I shall remember with pleasure when I'm old and grey. We're proud of you, Mrs O. We both are, aren't we, Stanley? I'm not proud of having a vandal for a missus. 
Stanley, what your missus did last night was a legitimate act of retaliation against unprovoked aggression, and no court in the land will say different. Uh, uh, shall I do you a piece of toast while I'm doing mine? I don't remember inviting you to have any toast. You didn't, but I'll forget the oversight under the circumstances. It's only an ordinary candle wick, you know, Chuck. What is? Elsie Hard's bedspread. Same as anybody might have. Tattier, in fact. I wish she hadn't done it. Oh, I well, you would, wouldn't you? I mean, that's typical. You let folk walk all over you and then thank them for the privilege. Well, it wasn't needed. It only made things worse. Well, now it's happened, has it? She's not come marching in here waving a tomahawk, has she? So far, she hasn't. No, and she won't. Any rod, don't worry, Stan. If she does, I'll protect you. <laughs> oh, do you know, I hate to admit it after all these years. But I married a weak man. No telling how far you'd have got with a strong one. Mm. I may not have the education, but I have got the character. I could have been the makings of the right man, you know. Still, you don't know who is the right man, do you, when you're a bit of a kid and you fancy you're in love? <laughs> oh, not that I don't love Stan, mind. Well, I must do to have stood him all these years, but... Well, it doesn't make me blind to his faults. Do you know what you've got? You have got guts. Do you reckon? Well, you must have to do what you did last night. I mean, what else would you call it? Barmy. That's what a lot of folk will call it, you know. They'll say I was just stirring up trouble for trouble's sake. But it wasn't like that, Eddie. I mean, you can take just so much, can't you? And then all of a sudden you've had a bellyful. You've just got to fight back. You have to make a stand sometimes in this world, don't you? Of course you have. Yeah, well, that's all I were doing, making a stand. Just letting them see they can't treat me like dirt and get away with it. Matter of pride, you see. Do you know? Do you know that could have been me talking, then? Of course, it won't come out looking like that, will it? It'll just come out like Hilda Ogden making a fool of herself again. You thumb your nose up at them. You're as good as they are any day. Do you really think so? Of course I do. Well, what's she like? Told you. Pleasant. Oh, well, anybody can be described as pleasant. Even you on occasion. Listen, when it comes to describing me, I am known as the red-headed pocket-sized Venus with the flashing hazel eyes. <laughs> you know, I'm surprised at her. According to all reports, she used to be a right tartar. A day for sorting out your financial affairs. Not a good day for travel. Blast, I'll have to put off that trip to Saint-Tropez. Oh. Our esteemed landlady up there skiving the morning off. She's not skiving. She's just going half an hour late, Mike won't mind. He doesn't have to, does he? He's only the boss. That's another thing that puzzles me. She does exactly as she likes with everybody else, including us, but she doesn't say a dicky bird to that old bat next door. Oh, well, maybe she fancies a quiet life. You can't blame her at her age. Why is it bothering you, anyway? It's her ceiling. Because my flower, we are the ones who've got to share the cost repairing the flaming thing, and that ceiling is not going to cost pennies to repair. Now, if you want to fork out for it, I don't. I've got better things to do with my money. Well, what do you want Elsie to do? Put a bomb through Hilda's letterbox? Well, I should do something. Or well, somebody should. Hey, it's Valentine's Day tomorrow. Fill that all up there. They won't peck their way through there again. Yeah, but what about that lot up there? Hi, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what's the joke? Well, did she really poke her sweeping brush through she there? She did, and it wasn't that funny. I think it's hilarious, the silly madam. She must be off her marbles, you know. Mind you, married to Oggy, I'm not surprised it hasn't happened sooner. That is not the point. The point is, how soon can you mend it, and how much will it cost? Well, I can get on with it whenever you like, and you won't come out under much less than 25 quid. Sorry. You're sorry. Can I leave a message? Would you tell... Oh, see what that is, will you, Eddie? Expect it'll be an offer to have the shower unit installed or coupons for some I never buy. <laughs> oh, and if it's a bill, keep it for Stan and give it to him when he comes in. <laughs> is this for Stan? Mr. S. Ogden, Esquire. Feels like a card. It's not his birthday, is it? Well, not unless he's taken to having a second one, like the Queen. <laughs> but you can't do that. Why not? That's well, tampering with Her Majesty's mail. Well, I shouldn't have thought that'd give you any sleepless nights. Any road, it's not stamped, so it's not been through the mail. Now, to do with Her Majesty, God bless her. Flaming Emma. Who'd send him a valentine? It's not from you, is it, Hilda? 
Yeah, that's right. I nipped out and posted it through my own letterbox while I was studying here pouring you a cup of tea. Who's it from? Well, it's not signed, is it? They never are. Ah, oh, it'll be somebody's idea of a joke. I mean, it won't be from a woman, will it? Not for Stan. <laughs> oh, it's from a woman, all right. Hey, take it easy, Hilda. You've got enough Barneys on your hands at the moment. Don't worry. I shan't touch one hair of his little head. It's her what can look out. Do you think you know who it's from? Oh, I know who it's from, all right. No danger. I don't know now about this. Of course you don't, Chuck. You don't believe me, do you? Oh, I think she does believe you, Stan. Oh, no, she doesn't. She never does believe me. No, well, I don't believe you as a rule because you tell such thumping great lies. But on this occasion, I happen to know you're telling the truth. You know not about that card or who sent it. Look, I don't get this. A woman sends me a, a sobby valentine worth 30p and you don't lose a curler. Don't you mind? Well, of course I mind. I mind a lot. In fact, we're going to have a flaming great barney about it, you and me. I wish you'd make your mind up. At the tops of our voices in full stereo sound, so them three next door won't miss a trick. Next door? What has it uh, got to do with next door? Ah, well, now, look, just ask yourself a few simple questions. One, how many women fancy Stanley enough to spend 30p on a daft card for him? Answer, nil. I could imagine a couple to start with. Who, oh, for instance? Well, uh, I'd shut up while you're in front, Stan. Oh, well, it's only a joke, love. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, two, that card was sent today, not tomorrow. So, strictly speaking, it's not a Valentine Day card at all. So, what is it? Well, it's a tactic, isn't it? Hey. Now, you've heard of psychological warfare, haven't you? Uh -huh. It's what they use to destroy the enemy's morals, like Lord Oror tried to do in the war. So, three, who are we at this present moment in time at war with? And I mean me and him, not the flaming country. Oh, I get it. Hilda, you're brilliant. Yeah. Now, them three have tried to stir it for us. Right, we'll give them their money's worth. Are you ready, Stan? Well, what do I do? Well, yell at me. Oh, come on, we've had enough practice these last 30 years to have to write your script. You're not usually stuck for insults to throw at me. You want me to insult you? Yeah, you can call me all you like. Now, come on. And don't forget, volume up full blast. It's going to be better than a Muppet show, this. <laughs> right, one, two, three. If you don't shut that mouth, I'll shut it for you. Permanently. Yak, 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 morning, noon and night. You could have been vaccinated with a gramophone needle for all I care. Great! What do you think's gonna happen? Well, by the time they've worn each other out, they've not the strength of to us as well. So we'll go round there, say it's their responsibility to pay for the damage. Now, he'll not back her up on account of the two black eyes she's given him, and she'll be that tired and worn out, she'll pay up without a murmur. <laughs> hey, you two! While you two have been in stirring here like a pair of flaming bookends, Cinderella's been out in the backyard freezing to death, hanging out a washing. Who would have you to ask? I did ask at least twice. What the heck's going on next door? Mr. and Mrs. Ogden and Squire being a love and cuddle like they do. And if you don't stop it, I'll get two women to send me Valentines and I'll go and thank them personally. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. All right, Stanley, don't overdo it. I think you're doing brilliant, Stan. Nobody asked your opinion, so shut up. Shall I go on? No, that'll do. Hmm. Now, you can both go upstairs and fetch me the bedroom carpet down. Bedroom carpet? What for? Because it's full of muck and plaster and pigeon feathers and I want it cleaning. Well, you can run the vacuum over it. No, I want it cleaning proper. What it needs is a good beating outside in the fresh air. Well, go on. Or are you too worn out with me nagging? Well, you told me to do the yelling and shouting. You did, Hilda. Yeah, didn't expect him to enjoy it so much, though. The carpet. Right, well, I'll be on. She's gone very quiet next door. They're getting their strength back for round two. Then what happens? They won't have the breath left to argue. We'll go. We all will. I don't think Elsie will. I can be very persuasive, you know. <laughs> no two. How much is a third of £25? Um, £8 summer. Mm. So if I save you £8 a month, it's a flaming sarky, will you? If you save me the money, I'll do your share of washing up for a week. Can I have that in writing? No. That was terrific. Just look at it, just flaming look at it, covered in muck and filth and rubbish oh, and heaven knows what. It? How did that happen? 
Oh, look, my new sweater. And my best flaming blouse. Has someone's chimney been on fire? No, it hasn't. Someone's been beating their lousy rotten carpet over somebody's backyard wall. A carpet? Yes, and making sure all the muck came in our direction. Ilda often. Dead right. You know, I don't think she's any sense. It's almost as if she's asking for more trouble. I wonder why. Yeah. You two haven't been up to anything by any chance, have you? Us? What could we have been up to? <laughs> And that's only the start of it. She's gonna wish she'd never been born by the time I've done with her. Not content with damaging us property, she tries to ferment trouble between you and me. Stanley, are you listening? What? What are you on about now? Now, you've heard of the Hundred Years War, haven't you? Well, it's just starting in this street. Oh, yes. I think it's time me and her next door had a real showdown. Oh, I enjoyed that. Well, it sounded like it. You can wear this if you like. It's no, dry. I'll wear something else. We should have sent it to the laundry and sent Hilda the bill. You know how to keep an argument going, don't you? I have not even started yet. She is going to live to rue the day she starts her funny work with me. If I were you, I'd be totally disdainful to Hilda. I mean, it's much more effective than common abuse. Oh, come on, Suze. You weren't exactly disdainful to Yvonne Shaw last week, were you? I mean, you can't call pinning someone up against Woolly's window being disdainful, then threatening to knock a block off if she so much as looked at Nick Partington again. Mm, charming. How the younger generation live. Yeah. Well, now I've made my position clear, I'll be completely disdainful to her in the future. <laughs> and that is exactly what I'll be with Hilda when I've had her guts for garters. Oh, no! Hilda, stop that racket now! Stop hammering on my wall! Turn that radio off now! I'll do what I like in my own house! And I can hammer on my wall! Hey, kid, you know when you came to live here, did you contemplate this sort of thing? Because I didn't. Do you think we could get a rent rebate on account of we living with a mania? And next door to one. Well, it looked, Mrs O, as if you'd come to what they call an impasse. That right, Stanley? It's like living in a dustbin with people throwing bricks at you. I think I'm losing my reason. They are, even if it's only for his sake. He lost his reason years ago, that's if ever he had any in the first place. Now, look, out of my way. I'm not having her next door telling me how loud I can play my wireless in my own home. I think this is a decision for the head of the household. You're talking to her. Now, out of my way, else I'll kick your ankles. Stanley! Hilda, if you touch that wireless, you know I'll... You what? Well, I'll think of something. Yeah, something pretty diabolical, eh, Stan? Now, Aye. look, out of my way. I'll count to three. One, two... Oh, go on, make a fool of yourself. What did you say? I said go on, switch it on if you want to carry on making a fool of yourself. Well, how do you reckon I'm doing that? By playing a game, Elsie Howards. Why not be dignified? Stand aloof. Let her do all the ranting and raving. You keep your cool. I mean, turn the other cheek if necessary. Then she'll be covered with confusion. She'll find she's beating out a thin air. Turn the other cheek, eh? Yeah. That right, Stan? Well, give it a try, love. It's worth a try. <coughs> no, it's not, you know. Why? Because I've been turning the other cheek all my life. And you know what happens when you turn the other cheek, don't you? You get two black eyes instead of one. No. When other folks start turning the other cheek a bit more, I'll do the same. That is a very unchristian point of view, Darylde. Don't you talk to me about Christianity, Eddie Yates. Christians don't spend their lives wondering how they can con folk. Mm. Or wondering how they can get out of working for a living. Mm. Or go about dressed up to the nines like a flaming walking man trap. Mm. No, you have to look after number one in this world. And that's just what I intend to do, especially where May West next door's concerned. <laughs> Hello. Can I pay for my papers? Mm. Wonders never cease. Have you come up on fools, Hilda? What happened? You, paying for your papers. It's an event. Oh, it's eight weeks, Mrs Ogden. £7.50. See what I mean? Tell me, 
did you insult all your customers? No, only them who don't pay me very often and disturb me peace and quiet with the public squabbling. Oh, well, takes two to tango, doesn't it? True. Have you uh, yes. any of those little paper handkerchiefs in packets? Yeah, please? I think so. You're not working? No, I took the morning off. I've just come back from the doctor's. No, it's serious. No, I caught a bit of a chill over a week ago, and I think it's gone to my stomach or something. Oh, there's no worse in this weather than feeling under par, is there? I can think of one thing a lot worse. Oh. You're referring to me, Mrs Howard? I wasn't even speaking to you, Hilda. I've chucked all that bread back where it belongs, you know. And I've chucked it all back again. Hilda? Don't you go bursting a gut in here. We've just got that floor. Flaming woman, I'll swing for her, oh, yes. Do you think it's all worth it, Mrs Alton? Well, well, all this aggravation, all this rowing. She enjoys every minute of it, don't you, Hilda? To her, it's like getting the kiss of life from a brandy drinker. Look, I'll tell you something, Mrs Fairclough. You and Elsie Howard have got a lot more in common than just your husband. Hilda? Look, I can say I'm enjoying it. You think we'd better to try and live in peace and harmony with your neighbours? Well, I do. It's not me. What causes all the trouble? Oh, you don't know what it's been like living next door to that woman all these years. In purgatory. Fellas. <laughs> Yanks. My stand nearly got murdered by one of her Yanks, you know. Did he? Who didn't know that? Oh, yes. Having her for a neighbour's ruined the quality of life for me and Stan. I would never have considered moving to that street if I'd known then what I know now. Still, you don't, do you? Till it's too late. ta -ra. Bye. Do you know she really believes that? I mean, it must be a bit difficult, mustn't it, having Elsie for a neighbour? I mean, well, she's a fairly colourful personality, isn't she? And then there's them two girls. Well, they're not exactly dormice, are they? Do you know, you've convinced me. It's all Elsie's fault. Hilda is the completely innocent bystander. Wouldn't take much to convince you of that. Me? I'm impartial. <laughs> Says you. What? Be quiet. Oh, you mean the galloping open next door? It's not us, she. Oh. Turn it off, Hilda! Where are you going? I can't stand it anymore, Gail. I'm going to the Rovers for me dinner. But we're the age that can stand noise. It's food and drink to us. No, I've just grown out of it. Yeah, me too. Where are you two off to? Our friendly neighbourhood Notter is at it again. As soon as we came in. We can't stand it. It will help you kill her if you want. So if you decide that it's the only solution, we're in the rovers. Didn't hear you. I'm not surprised with that flipping racket going oh, on. Oh, yes, what racket is that? Why don't you stop it? Well, go on, you try it. Have a go yourself. Go on. Hilda, pack it in for heaven's sake. We can't hear ourselves talk here. How long has that been going on? Oh, forever. That's what comes to having a neighbour like Hilda Ogden. Aren't I lucky? Well, what are you going to do about it? Oh, look, I've tried everything. I've tried concentration. I've tried tit for tat. But it runs off Hilda's back like a water off a duck's. The only thing I'm working on now is the theory that she herself will eventually get fed up with a racket. You are getting very reasonable in your old age, aren't you? Pardon, what did you say? I said you're getting very reasonable, aren't you? Are you insinuating that I'm past playing Hilda as her own game? I didn't say that, did Well, I? I'll show you whether I'm past it or not. I'll stop a tap for good, I will. Where are you going? I'll show you. Elsie! Come have me dinner in peace. Uh, did you say something? Oh, never mind. All right, where is she? Did you do that? Did you just switch that wireless off? Well, he didn't switch himself off, Hilda. This is my home, Mrs. Yes, Howard. Yes, and that is my next door. I repeat, this is my home, and as far as I know, nobody's invited you into it, have they, Stanley? Oh, no, Chuck, no, no. Right, no, so no. will you kindly leave before I forget I'm a lady and do you a serious injury? Oh, I, you and how many flaming others, Hilda? Just me, that's all, just me. All right, come on and try it, come on, I'm right. waiting. Hang on, oh, hang pack on. it in the pair of you, will you? Come on, Hilda, I'm waiting. Elsie. Look, it's nothing to do with you, Len. Nothing to no, do nobody with... invited you in here, I, I told you, nothing to do with you, and I'm still waiting, Hilda. 
This is my house, and I'm having my dinner. And I'll have it in peace and quiet without two flaming women shouting round me head. Well said, Stanley. Yes. Yeah. She just marched in here and turned that wireless off without so much as a by your leave. A good job, too. Here, here. Oh, I see. You're against me and all, are you? My own husband. I'm not against you. I think it's all this hargy bargy. And no man would in his own house. I think you've behaved like a model of patience, Look, Stanley. Look, this is not really. funny, Lennon. There'd be I no argument about what... you if you'd stop playing your flaming radio no, so loud. I've chucked all her rubbish over in my I backyard. Suppose... Talking, you've all but ruined the flaming blouse with your black muck from your carpet. Well, what's one blouse to you? You've got more blouses than a discount warehouse. And we all know why, don't we? Not that it seems to be doing you much good these days. No, no. To... Turn it up. Look, why don't you just take this to arbitration? This is not Grunwick, Len. That's no, a damn sight more serious. I'm talking about just sitting round a table to find out who was the cause of it. Hey, yeah, she was. Oh, will you, well, you shut up for heaven's sake? Why don't you just sit down over a cup of tea and then you'll find it was just a... a storm in a teacup. That's a good idea. And you sit between them. You know, act as referee. Me? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Since you suddenly seem to fancy yourself as a Jack Jones. You women, you're all the blooming same. Now, how can you say that, Alfred? Well, if it isn't that chap I married in a moment of total insanity. Tip from you and give us a cup of tea. Oh, I'll get it. I was going to brew up anyway. Oh, so were you? I only got me self mixed up in that fracas between Hilda and Elsie, didn't I? Oh, yeah. How did that happen? It's a long story. It usually is with Elsie. Ah, oh, don't you start, will you? I thought you were as sick of it as I am. Well, I could do without squabbling neighbours. Who can't? So, what happened? Well, they asked me to act as a sort of an intermediary, in my capacity as a counsellor, of course. Not in your capacity as a partial ex-boyfriend, I you? was very impartial, I love, mm, you know. About as impartial as me. And? Did you sort it all out? Well, in a way, yeah. What way exactly? I said if they didn't sort it out between them, I'd knock their bloody heads together. That's my husband. About as subtle as an elephant with clogs on. Well, it worked! I think. Hello. Everything back to normal, I see. Stanley snoozing by the fire, and you reflecting on how kind life's been to you. Eh, uh, is this bit of cake going, Gash? Ta. Oh, it's lovely, darling, there. Do you make it yourself? It's just like my mum used to make. I think I'm being had for a mug. Don't start that again. Pardon? Did you speak then, Stanley? Do you know I didn't see his lips move? I mean, Len Fairclough's the last person to negotiate between me and Elsie Howard. He's bound to take her side. She's been his doxy since the year, Dot. Well, top builder. Here he goes again. Call it a day, he says. Start afresh. Well, she would agree to that, wouldn't she? She's not the grieving party, I am. Hey, on that. Do you know, you two have been so close together for so long, you can talk to each other even when one of you is asleep. Truly amazing. Well, Top Yates. Oh, shut up, Patsy. Sorry. I still say I'm being had for a mug. Can't hear now. Well, stop chewing your toast and listen proper. That's their wireless. It's very faint. They've got it going full belt. That's for our benefit. It's faint, I tell you. Whose side are you on? What are you going on about? It's not me. What's going on, Stanley? If there's anybody going on, it's not me. You had a wireless on last night loud enough to wake the dead. <laughs> ah, well, that were last night. Full belt, dead against the wall. Well, like we're in the heat of the moment. And you're flattened the battery, too. That's about a quid, isn't it? Heat of the moment, that. But this is calculated. Different thing altogether. Oh, look, will you drop it? Drop it? Oh, come on, you two. Have you taken root to so much? If I drop anything, it'll be on her flipping head. You've had two ceilings down between a pair of you, haven't you? That 
well, then they started. No, look, it's not worth it. There's nothing in this for us at all. Anything that happens, we'll cough it, I'll tell you. You're just sticking your neck in a noose. People can't just come descending through your ceiling, you know, Stanley. Sticking their legs into your bedroom. Oh, no. First, first, Stan. Everybody's got rights, even us. If we had every right in the world, we couldn't win. Ah, oh, well, you've said a mouthful there. We never get us rights. But I'll tell you this. I'll go down fighting. Oh, Egg. Feel it. Go on, feel it. No, I know. It's still ringing wet. I can't wear that. You wear something else. It's not my fault. Egg, you too. I want this breakfast clearing away before I come in. I'm sick and tired of coming to dinner. I will catch time. my death at home. Well, somebody else then. I've got nothing else clean. She's demented, that woman. She's mad. She is. You can borrow one of mine. And what have you got clean? That red one. Oh, red. On me. Terrific. Don't be daft. I thought you were going down to the police. Oh, don't be soft. Of course I'm not going to the police. Well, you laid down the station last night. Oh, I can handle Lil Rogan without going to the police. That's what they're there for. That's what they're paid for. She's a public nuisance. They have to sort out public nuisances. You can't hang up your washing now. Look, I've given a fair warning. Let's see how long it's going to take to say, sink in, shall we? It's all right. It's never sink in. It's got nothing to sink in, too. She's just a stupid old cow, that's now, all. Look, you. I have called Ilda Ogden from El Taberno, up Ill and Downdale over the donkey's years. I don't think there's a single word I haven't called her. But there's someone to me doesn't like it when you start calling her names. You what? Oh, come oh, on, illogical Elsie. it may be, but all the same. What are we supposed to do, then? We're suffering as well, you know. Well, just drop the subject once and for all, that's all. My house, my neighbours. If they need calling, I'll call them. And turn that damn thing off. It's driving me mad. Do you know, I think they're all funny round here. Do you know, I've thought that for a long time. Come on. Surely you can do it for less than 25 quid. Well, it's the time, you see, look. Oh, never mind the sob story. Just tell us. Well, it's such a fiddling job. I mean, a new house, I could put a ceiling in quicker. I don't want a new house. I just want a little titchy hole fixing in the ceiling, that's all. That's what I mean, a titchy hole. Look, I tell you what, 20 quid and that's my last offer. Oh, go on. No, you ask anyone to do it, it'll be 20 quid and that'll be rock bottom. 20 quid? Well, I'll do both then for 30 quid. The 30 quid for the two. So that's, uh, that's, that's 15 quid each, is no, that...? No, 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 I said 30 quid for the two. I'm, I'm not sure I'm with you. You never were very good at arithmetic, were you? 30 quid for the two, 20 quid for one. 20 from 30 is 10, which you give me and keep your mouth shut. Oh, I see. Oh, Leonard, you do improve with age. You know that. So as far as Hilda's concerned, that's 20. As far as Hilda, nothing. As far as Rita's concerned, it's 20. You know, doing favours for you can be very bad for my health. Otherwise, I could have done it for now. Let me know. Right, says drop it. You're going to drop that and all? 20 quid. Well, that's what it's going to be. That's what it's going to be? Is that all you've got to say? Titchy little hole in the ceiling, 20 quid. That's the estimate. Just add it off Len Fairclough. If you hadn't gone poking through theirs... That were them. Her and her flaming lodger. So if there's any 20 quids to be paid, they can pay it. You can just take that round to her. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. Me? Yes, you, you big lump. And you can tell her ladyship that either she pays it, or by heck, the war hasn't started yet. <laughs> well, did you tell her? I want my dinner. I told you to take it round. Look, if I'm going round there, I'm going round in my own flipping time. You want to exercise your authority, you know. You're supposed to stand up for your home and family. That's what husbands are for. Not to let folk go walking all over you. There's no husband in this case, is there? To come round here. Exactly. Exactly. She can't keep an husband. I say she can't keep an husband. Shut up, will you? Shut up. I won't be told to shut up in my own home by you or anybody else, Stanley oh, Ogden. Quick. Now, give it here. What's the point? Look, if you're too flaming gutless, I'll take it round myself. Now, give me that estimate. No, I won't. Oh, won't you? Now, you give it me, else I'll wail it out of your fat hide. Shut up, woman. Shut up. Don't you take that tone with me. I guess it's not like this in executive estates. Well, probably not many of them have a really carrying voice like Mrs. Ogden. Perhaps she should have had it trained. You're no better than you should be. Can't even find an husband, let alone keep one. I'll just ignore her. Deirdre was looking for you, by the way. Looking for me? But she knows where I am. I'm out with Tracy. White coats will be coming to take them away. 
Don't you feel sorry for her stand, though? Yeah. Zena Sharples once said to me, they bear witness to divine providence. <laughs> How else would they have found each other? I think she's frustrated. Oh, tell me you isn't. Well, not like her. You can put it all down to an unsatisfactory love life. In that case, I'm just the same and so are you. <laughs> <laughs> if you're right, we'll all end up crackers. <laughs> What's up with that? Oh, blinking thing! It's time we got another. Oh, more money. Need a fresh rental and all. It does need fixing, you know, Elsie. You know, that could be her next door. Her machine makes it go like that. She'll never be sewn at this time of day. Precisely. It is her machine. I've heard that before. Well, what are you waiting for? I'm going to count to ten and then I'll go. Yeah. Don't think it out, sir. The fix won't reach. I don't know why you've got to do it at all. I've got to mend the cart, haven't I? It's broken. Yeah. Well, it's not worn out with pushing, that's for sure. It's worn out with standing outside the rovers. Ha-ha. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh, I see. It's not the sewing machine. And what do you think you're doing? I've come to tell you you can just put that thing away. I've told you before you can't just come walking into people's houses, you know. Out! Do you understand what I've just said? I will have no more of that thing. You carry on, Stanley. He's got a perfect right. He can do what he likes in his own home, same as I can. I have not come here to argue with you. I am just telling you. It's to do with his livelihood, that, and you can't stop him because it's laid down in law. I've never heard of a fellow washing windows with an electric drill before. It's got nothing to do with you. Now, look, you are doing this deliberately because you know it causes interference. Well, if there's any more of it, I shall report you as a public nuisance. Interfere interference? Ah, well, you'd know all about that, wouldn't you? Because you're interfering where you're not wanted. You're not wanted in this street, but you have to come crawling back, to Now, you? look, I am telling you, I will have you done as a public nuisance. And furthermore, I shall report you to the telly license people because I have paid for my television license and I have a right to watch that which I've paid for. It's interfering with that television stand. Oh, give it to you. Now, why didn't you say so before? You just tell me what programmes you want to watch and I'll do my best to keep you happy. Although, mind you, I have got a lot of holes to drill. Look, I am telling you all I am going You'd to tell you. You'd be surprised the holes I've got to drill in this house. Right, what people say about you, you start raving mad. Very useful device, this, Stanley. I'm glad you got it. I'm not enough to do with it. You know what you are? You are mad. Start raving bonkers mad. Oh! Mad, am I? Well, we'll see who ends up flipping mad. Hey, you start with your insults out of my house. You can't go slanging me, Elsie Howard, or Tanner, or whatever you call yourself. You probably don't know what your name is. Can't find a fella who'll give you one what sticks. You know what's wrong with you, don't you? You're sick. And you know why you're sick? Because you're rubbish and you know it. Oh, is that right? Rubbish. Well, at least rubbish is a cut above scum. Always have and always will be. You know it and you don't like it, do you? Rubbish, am I? Oh, we'll see about blooming rubbish. Yeah? See how you like that for rubbish? You do know what time it is. Why is your watch stopped? No, mine hasn't, but I thought perhaps yours might have. Shouldn't you have been down at that shop five minutes ago? I'm taking one of my days off in lieu of them I worked over the holidays. Oh, I see. Well, perhaps you might do something useful with it, like tidying up or something. I thought I might spend it thinking horrible thoughts about the horrible oggies. Very good idea, but why not think horrible thoughts about this carpet and put the Uber on it, eh? Yeah, all right, I'll do it later. Do it now. All right. I think you're doing a bit of hoovering with that, were you, kid? No, I'm going to crack on it was a broomstick and fly around the room on it. Oh. Only if I was you, I'd empty the bag first, because yesterday when I tried it, it was putting down what it was picking up. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Blimey! Elsie, come here a minute, will you? Now what? Someone's tipped our dustbin over. It's full. Oh, but I know someone's what isn't. Right. Hey, oh, I wouldn't miss this for the world. Wait for us, Elsie.
what's to do, Elsie. Oh, mind your own business. Oh, give it a kick as well. Now, who can that be, I wonder? You know very well who it is. Go and answer it. Oh, I don't think I want to be involved in an unseemly row on my front doorstep this time of the morning. It was a bit strong, you know, Elder. Ah, well, that was what you might call spontaneous combustion, that's that. She'll have the flaming door down. you just have to go round and knock hers down, won't you? And don't forget to break the windows on your way. Flaming woman! That were a bit of an anticlimax, weren't it? Yeah, it was. I'll put this through a letterbox. Oh, no, you will not, you know. Why not? It's a very good idea. Because I say so. Just because we've got one lunatic in the neighbourhood doesn't mean to say we've all got to drag ourselves down to her level. I'll say what I have to say to that hard-faced bitch in court. I'll look forward to it. And it takes one to know one. Hey, you didn't really leave that rubbish into Elsie's yard, did you? Ask no questions, you'll be told no lies. I don't know anybody could do such a thing. It's doing things like that that gives streets like this a bad name. I'd do it all over again if I had to. Yes, I don't doubt it, love. I mean, if it's in your nature to chuck muck, I suppose that's what you will do. We had right on our side, you oh, know. Oh, shut up, will you? I'm sick of this argy bargy. It's been going on for flipping weeks. But we was the injured party, Stan. It's not only your party that's going to get injured, it's your pocket as well, isn't it? What do you mean, pocket? Well, she's taking you to court, isn't she? Madam Howard. When did you hear that? <sighs> Somebody mentioned it. Oh, well, so what? It's going to cost you, innit? Because if she gets a lawyer, you're going to have to have a lawyer, aren't you? And if she wins the case, will it get into even deeper? Because you're going to have to pay her costs as well as your own. Happy now, are you? She took... Yeah, sit down a minute, Al. Well, what exactly is it about, Hilda? I'm supposed to be going to work, you know. Yeah, well, I'm sorry to take up your valuable time, but you councillors are paid to give us citizens valuable advice, aren't you? Well, all we're paid for is loss of time and earnings. Oh, yeah, well, if you say so. Mm. Anyway, I'm not the councillor for this ward, you know. It's Len Fairclough you ought to be talking to. Ah, yeah, except that in this case he's what you might call uh, biased, isn't he? On account of him being an interested party, like. Friend of the accused. Hilda... What exactly do you want? A bit of inside information. What about? What about this court I'm being had up in by Jezebel next door? Oh, I see. Well, from what I can make out, how, how you lot are going on about it, I think it's a case for the Small Claims Arbitration Court. Oh, yeah. And what's that when it's at home? Well, it's like it says. It's, um, it's a court that's set up to deal with small disputes. You know, the sort of thing that the big courts haven't time to deal with. I see. And what's this court going to cost me? Because that's what it comes down to in the end, isn't it? Costing you. All it'll cost you is one pound. A pound? So. But what about my solicitor's fees? Oh, no, that quid covers everything, including legal advice. Hey, it's a bit of all right, that, isn't it? Aye. Mind you, you're lucky you live round here. Manchester's the only place outside London that's got one of these courts. Still, it's going to help a lot of people who can't afford hefty legal fees, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's a wonderful country we live in when you think about it, isn't it? Probably the best in the world, Hilda. If only we had the brains to realise that and stop trying to ruin everything. Yeah. Anyway, if that's all, I'll get off. Oh, yeah, yeah that's smashing. Right, thanks. I'll see you. Oh, and uh, by the way, um, best of luck with her next door. You could do worse than get your feet under that table, you know. Regular little gold mine is that shop. Now, if Oh, you... I should have mentioned, yes. You can put in a counterclaim, you know. Hmm. Anyway... before beauty. Pearls before swine. Well, 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 it's the last of the dustbin men and his worst half. It's getting so they'll let anybody in here. They must say without you lot in. Can I get you happy people anything, like a, a couple of tommy guns or the odd club with some six-inch nails in? You don't put good ideas into me, Ed. I'll have my tail on me husband. After us, you will. I suppose you aren't old enough to be in here, are you? Cos nobody would know it from what comes out every time you open that gob of yours. Oh, what a command of the English language she's got. Do you know she's going a lecture tour next year, round Warrington? Hey, watch it now. Now, don't you threaten here, and I'm telling you two something. Mm. Next time you think of pulling a trick like that, take my advice and forget it. Oh, give over, you're frightening me to death. I bet you do that to yourself every morning, don't you, Hilda? When you look in the mirror. I'm warning you. Hey, and I'm warning you and all. 
It's a flaming pub, this, not a flipping cattery. If Mrs. Walker was here, out that door, your feet wouldn't touch. Just wrap it, will you? Three loving cups, was it? And a light bottle for my wife. Yeah. After you've given us two grapefruit juices and a dry sherry, please. Tell you what, Fred. You see to the three stooges. I'll see to Tom and Jerry. It's not a barmaid. The need is a flaming referee. <laughs> you don't understand women, period, mate. If that's the way you go proposing to them. I mean, how did you propose to your first wife? Go down on your bended knee and ask her to share the rent with you. Well, I was younger then, was I? What the hell's age got to do with it? Yeah. How'd they get there? Well, they walked, didn't they? If they spend half their life in your flipping shoes, I'm not surprised. Now, get them off my table. Well, who put them there? Well, you did, you big lump. Oh, look, Stan, I've got more to think about than your flaming woolly mittens. You do know where I'm going today? Of course I do. I mean, has it dawned on you yet that first thing after dinner, I've got to be down at that arbitration place arguing the toss with her next door? I said yes. And does it enter your thick head that what I need today is a bit of help, not flipping hindrance? Well, I'll do anything. What do you want me to do? Right, go back to bed. Get out of my sight. Oh. Don't you think you should take your curlers out? Just a thought, you know. <laughs> And don't you think it's sort of uh, smarten up a bit, you know? Or, do you think? You mean... Hey, you might just have something there, Stan. I suppose even you're entitled to one bright idea every Preston Guild. Yeah. That's what they say, isn't it? To them what hath shall be given. So you have to look like one of them what hath. Well done, Stanley. <laughs> you can side that table. <laughs> Ah. It's all my uncle Wayne, you are he. Ask me another. All right. Where's Lesotho? What are you doing? It's all these places you can dial direct. Look, do you realise if I dial 010 8525, I can speak to one of my many friends in Hong Kong. Which you haven't got. Which I haven't got. Look, there's all sorts. Japan, India, Los Angeles. <laughs> can I speak to Mr Steve Austin, please? This is a very old bionic friend of his. May I speak to Monsieur Roger Florio, please? It is. It is, Luke. Lyon, France. 010 I've got the rest of his number in my bag. But we can't. Look, I've thought of now. Tell us, what did he say when he came over? Any time you wish to get in touch with me, I'll be waiting. But it's not our phone. You'll never know. He will when he gets the bill. It's dead cheap, Luke. Charge band one. France. 9.60 seconds for three pence. You can say an heck of a lot in 9.60 seconds. I mean, think of that fella on the telly when the second hand's going round. He tells you thousands of things before Alistair Burnett comes on. Well, I still don't like it. Yeah, but you're not that fond of breathing, are you? <laughs> when have a minute, Betty? Yes. Uh, Lars Scott in there, please. Right. And, uh, you having a nod? Oh, no, thanks. I've got to keep my head clear for this afternoon. Oh, uh, what's all that? I knew it. I told you about half an hour since. I've got to go to this small claims arbitration thingy, me, Bob, for me epic battle with Ilder Ogden. Oh, yeah, in Manchester. Well, good luck. Yeah, I'll go and settle the girls down first, though. Yeah, and tell young Steve to keep an eye on the factory floor, will you? About time he got used to active service. <laughs> God help him. Yeah, you're right there. How's your game with us? <laughs> Cheeky devil. She never said that. No. Well, she didn't have to, did she? Do I have the Dutch courage, as you told her? I don't need no Dutch courage. A pint and a live bottle. But why don't you get dressed up, you know? Put your best clothes on. My best clothes? You mean them have only had ten years? Well, you got a new raincoat. Oh, I'd look a right one, wouldn't I, going down to the court in my raincoat and out else? And for your information, Stanley, this raincoat's over a year old. Only well, trying to help. Yeah, well, just shut up, Chuck. You've had this year's idea. Don't push your luck. Why don't you borrow something? What do you think I'm here for? We'll try another one, shall we? Yeah, that's him again, thanks. Right, right, right. Hello? 
Hello, Hello. 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 Nice to see you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I was, uh, I was just wondering if I could uh, presume on your generosity again. Is there any chance of borrowing your black coat, you know, the one with the fur collar, just for the afternoon? <sighs> Only, I, I know you're a very fair-minded person and, uh, you see, she'll be going dressed up like a dog's dinner and I'll be, well, you know. Oh, this court thing, yeah. Yeah, I think I can manage that. Give us a quarter of an hour and I'll nip round with it. Oh, sir. Fancy a pair of earrings as well. Oh, I say. Right, it's on. Thank you very much. My pleasure. See you later. Uh, very right. good. Thank you. I thought you told me you were ashamed of being seen out with him. Oh, shut up. Uh, where's your ladyship? Caught for this. <laughs> Miss Bradshaw. How delightful to see you together, so soon after your happy news. You really must have a sherry with me. <laughs> Just want to get on the right side of the jury, you know. Uh, smile at them. Look, Stan, I know you've had plenty of experience, but it's not one of them sort of courts. I'm not a criminal, you know. Just an ordinary human being trying to stand up for my rights. Oh, I was smiling at whoever's there, like, you know. Well, I'm not going to kick him on the shins, am I? No. I go and fetch us my purple coat. Thought you were going to borrow something. Yeah, so did I, but she's not here, is she? Get us my purple coat. Oh, I'm not squirting. I keep in my top drawer with my brooches in. Might have to cover a few mop holes up. All right, all right. Ooh. Anybody home? Oh, yeah, I'm in here. Here we are. Oh, bless It's the least I can do. Mom, oh, give us your arms. There we are. Oh, why don't it feel lovely? Mm. And the hat. Honest. Of course, honest. Oh, Go on. Hey. Oh. Uh, excuse me, have you seen my wife? You what? My wife. I left, left her down here a few minutes ago. It's me, you daft devil. It's never. Didn't you know, I missed? Well, of course, I did one scene, never forgotten. Oh, what do you have to go and say that for? Well, it's the truth, isn't it? Oh, Stan, I despair, I missed. You can't even tell a decent lie. Which is more than we can say about you, Wilder. I hope. <laughs> Too true. <laughs> hey, did you say something about earrings? Oh, I did that. Here we are. Oh, hey, look, Stan. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I've got it, have you? Don't let them come the old acid with you. They're as cute as a barrel load of monkeys over there. Oh, don't worry. And watch that Vera, and if she asks for an hour off because of grandmothers, they'll give her the old Evo. She's buried four grandmothers to my certain knowledge. Four? You're only supposed to have two. <laughs> now he's catching on. I don't suppose they'd... Uh... Oh, no. It's all right, you come in the oh, no. Look what they did to you, know who? Oh, yeah, I know, but they stopped all that when his mother threatened to report them to the police. Elsie, they would do it to a copper. No, they wouldn't, I know. Wouldn't what? Oh, that's all right, lad. It's past history. Well, last year, any road. Yeah. Uh, don't you think you'd better be getting back over there because they'll be coming back from lunch by now? Oh, yeah. Uh, well... Good luck, Mrs. Howard. Ah, how's that for bravery? Him wishing you luck. See you, lad. Yeah. Right. I'm not so sure you are, right? Oh, I am. I am, I know I am. How can you be so sure when you haven't got the faintest idea what we're talking about? Have you? No. I've spoken about it. <laughs> oh, you rotten devils. Poor lad will be on pins for the afternoon. <laughs> it serves him right. What for? He's a fellow. What more do you need? Oh. <laughs> oh. All ready for the fray, I uh, see. Oh, yes, as ready as I'll ever be. Well, I don't like being a Job's comforter, but if I were you, I'd prepare myself for a defeat. I, I'm not quite sure I'm with you. Well, you know what they say, from each according to the means. And there can't be many people with fewer means than the audience. I'm still not quite sure I get your drift. Well, nowadays, if one gives the impression of having a little money, the rest of the world seems bent on taking it away from you. That, I'm afraid, is the modern philosophy. Take from those who've worked hard for their living and give it to the feckless. Still, hope it all turns out for the best. <laughs> so do I. Hey, don't 
sit down yet? Why not? Well, we've not been told. I've no need to tell him. Sit down. I know what a chair's for. Hey, this is all right, isn't it, eh? Played payers' money. You and me have paid for this, I'll tell you. Hello. Oh, uh, hello. <laughs> Stanley. How do? Oh, please sit down. Mrs... Ogden, uh, Mr and Mrs Stanley Ogden. <laughs> I'm Mrs Taylor. You managed to find us all right, then? Uh, oh, yes, eventually. <laughs> we thought it was near Magistrate's Court. Oh. I know where that is. I've been down there a few times, you know. <laughs> it doesn't count. Would you sit there, Mrs. Howard? Mr. Franklin, the arbitrator, will be here in a moment. You're looking very smart, Hilda, as usual. I hadn't realised it was a dressed-up do. Well, this should be a very informal hearing. I have read the papers in connection with your claim, and I want to ask you one or two questions. I would like you to answer the questions I ask you and not debate the claim between yourselves. Now, Mrs. Howard, you are claiming the cost of damage done to a bedroom ceiling from Mrs. Ogden. That's right. And Mrs. Ogden, you are counterclaiming the cost of damage done to your ceiling. Mm. Malicious damage. Please, just answer the questions. It will save us a lot of time. Are you counterclaiming for the cost of damage done to your ceiling? Yes, I am. And all this trouble between you, which resulted in the damage to your property, started with the discovery of pigeons in your loft. Which got in through her roof. It was your side of the roof that was in, and I got witnesses, I chuck. That's why I'm here, <laughs> you know. You heard the sound of pigeons in your loft, and you went up to investigate. Well, not me, actually. No, it was Councillor Fairclough. He, he went up to see what it was all about, and then discovered the hole in her side. Mm. Councillor Fairclough now, is it? But please, Mrs Ogden, you mustn't interrupt. Sure, told him. Let finish. Mrs Howard? Well, when we realised the pigeons were coming from her side, we asked her if she'd stop up the hole, and she refused. And it was then that Susie, uh, Miss Birchall, one of the young ladies that lodges with me, went up to see if she could shoo the birds out, as it were. And it was then that the accident happened, and her foot went through her ceiling. Accident, my eye! What was she doing in our part of the roof, any road? Tell his worship that, then. Mrs Ogden, I am asking the questions. And that presumably was the start of the animosity that has since developed between you. Yes, it was. Oh, she wouldn't pay for the flaming thing, would Why she? Why the heck should I? The venit pigeons hadn't come in your side of the roof. The accident never would have happened, would it? It wasn't pigeons what shoved their feet through my ceiling, was it? <laughs> By The hole in her ceiling was an accident. The hole in mine wasn't. It's as simple as that. Well, so you keep telling me, Mrs Howard, but in this case, it's irrelevant. How can it be irrelevant? You don't go shoving brooms through people's ceilings just because you feel like it, just like that. Mrs. Howard, this hearing is only concerned with the claim for damages. How much damage has been done to your property and Mrs. Ogden's? Who caused it, so who shall pay for it? Now, please continue, Mrs. Ogden. Well, uh, my husband Stanley here went round to try and reason with Mrs. Howard to uh, see if he could get her to pay for a ceiling to be mended. Oh, he's very cool in a situation like that, is Stanley, you know. Well, being self-employed, you see, he knows how to conduct himself, you know, coming into contact with people from all walks of life. But she just gave him a mouthful, didn't you she? You bet I did. Now, at this stage, your ceiling had been damaged, but Mrs Howard's was still intact. You bet it was. And then she goes and pokes her broom handle right through it just to get back at me. Look, if the hole in my ceiling were an accident, then so would the hole in hers. Mrs Ogden, the intention doesn't matter. Now, as far as I can see, neither of you is denying you did damage to the other ceiling. Though in Mrs. Howard's case, it was actually her lodger. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. So I suppose my mucky washing and her tough tipping her rubbish over my wall is irrelevant and all. Well, as far as the claim is concerned, Mrs. Howard, it is. <laughs> Just shows what a vindictive woman she is. What lengths she'll go to to get back at me. There's nothing to say I can't beat me rug when I want to. I'm a very house-proud woman, me, you know. Well, I suppose it's only natural, isn't it, with cleaning being my profession. And he wrote, it weren't my house, them pigeons settled in. Muck attracts muck, you know. Oh, Mrs. Howard, Mrs. Ogden. Now, this really has gone far enough. Mrs. Howard, is there anything else you'd like to say? Nothing that I could repeat in here. Mrs. Ogden, 
Only that I do have another neighbour the other side and all, and I never have a scrap of trouble with her. Well, she knows how to behave. She's going to marry a counsellor, so you can tell. She hasn't got through more husbands than hot dinners. That's enough, Mrs Ogden. I mean it. Now, I've heard all that I need to hear to enable me to come to a decision. Now, I see from the report the root cause of the problem, the pigeons getting into the loft space, no longer exists, as the hole they used has now been repaired. That's right. The costs you are both claiming are for the repair of your ceilings, each of which the other damaged. Now, as the estimates for doing the work are identical, my decision is that you should both pay for your own repairs. Aye? Which is what I wanted to settle for in the first place. You will receive a copy of the award by the court of delivery, Mrs. Howard. But as there's no money to be paid in, you need take no further action. Thank you. Cheerio. Howard. Same goes for you, Mrs. Ogden. You haven't been listening to a single word I've been saying, have you? It was all in her mates what started it. We was just the innocent victims, weren't we, Stan? Come on, there's no good arguing. Ah, yeah. They call it flaming justice. the papers and agreed to abide by the arbitrator's decision, Mrs. Ogden. She's right, you know, Joe. Well, what was the point of us coming here in the first place, then? Tell me that. Because you and Mrs. Howard were unable to agree between yourselves. That's why you asked us to arbitrate for you. Hmm. Twenty rotten quid for somewhat what we never did in the first place. Well, I hope you've got it, because I'm sure I haven't. I shouldn't let Lenny hear you say that, Elder. I shall have that hole in your ceiling till next Christmas. I suppose you'll be doing yours free, for services rendered. Oh, put another record on, will you? Look over, Jack, you gag. Is getting you nowhere? Oh, you're too soft, you. Too soft by a mile. And to think he fought for the likes of you and him in there so we could have justice in this oh, country. come on, before you get arrested. All right. But don't go thinking I'm satisfied, because I'm not. Not by a long chalk. Come along, Stanley. Go on. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you. I can't say I'm overjoyed with the outcome, but I did agree to go along with it. Any time. Thanks. Oh, I, I shall probably be seeing you, living next door to her. I wouldn't <laughs> be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Put us out of his misery. Well, we lost, didn't we? I mean, what can you expect with a fella like that? Wasn't even dressed proper, you know. No wig, nout. I mean, you do expect a bit of decoration when you go in a court, don't you? You've got to pay Elsie's damage, have you? Oh, no, she's paying her own, same as we are. How the heck do you reckon you lost? Well, we was victimised, wasn't we? Same as always. Well, I mean, why don't you pay our fee, children? It seems fair enough to me, though. Well, she's got three pay packets going into that house, hasn't she? I mean, she doesn't have to scrimp and save every time she wants a new pair of tights. I can't see your stand scrimping and saving to buy his pants. Oh, I might have known whose side you'd be on. I'm on nobody's side. You're both as bad as one another. When it comes to the Ogden, you all take sides. It's you and us. Always has been and always will be. Give us a couple of light bottles to take out. Right. Yeah. Well, at least I've got a nice quiet evening in front of the telly to look forward to. You're not going, then? Going where? To half and Rina's engagement party. Oh, nobody said now to us about it. Well, they're not seeing you yet, then. No, well, I mean, we only decided this dinner time. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, time for mentioning it. Mm. We'll not be needing them now, seeing as we're off out. <laughs> See ya. Ta ta, lovey. <laughs> well, come here. <laughs> we both hope you're going to be very happy. Oh, thanks very much. Let's hope you know what you're doing, eh? Oh, I do. <laughs> Just make sure he takes his socks off in bed, and you can't go wrong. Suppose he has cold feet. Don't you know? Mind your own business. Go <laughs> and get yourself a drink. It's all free, you know. It's free? I'm oh, selling tickets to the door, didn't you know? You said it was your idea. Get out. <laughs> Thanks very much. I'll, I'll open it later if you don't mind. Well, it's your present. Do what you want. It's not much, just a gesture. It's much appreciated. Yeah, Thanks, well, love. I'll do it. Hey, are we going to have enough glasses? Stop free and enjoy yourself. I mean, what should you lend us some if we can't stop? Honestly, I don't know what's wrong with me. Oh, pals, you get worried about something. Mm, yes, you would, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Hello, darling. How do you go on? Well, it's a good job they've abolished time, you know, so the problem would have had me for the death penalty. Well, who won? Neither of us. We both have to pay. But, now, didn't I tell you that in the first yes, place? Yes, I know, and I wanted to do that in the first place, but who wouldn't? Dilda Flaming Ogden. I hope. Talk of the devil. 
Oh, well, how nice you could come. Oh, well, we took it, we was invited. Of course you are. Only we've not seen nobody, you see, we've been at the court. Oh, shut up about the court. I'm only telling where we've been, Stan. No doubt they all know the sordid details by now. And it all, we'd like to wish you and your intended as the happiness. I would have got your card, only most of the shops were shut, you see, except the cabin, and they haven't got much choice. The coat's still in one piece, Hilda. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks very much for landing it. Not that it did us much good. Come oh, on, there's too much yak in here. I told you it was a mistake to invite all these women. Let's see a bit more exercise of the feet, shall we, instead of so much of the tonsils. Starting with the happy couple. There you are, girl. Are you all right? You're very quiet. Oh, yeah, I was just thinking. It reminds me a bit of when we got engaged. Ah, oh, well, things have changed, you know. There was a war on. Yeah. One thing hadn't changed, though. What? You managed to make a piggy yourself then, and no. all. Got room for another one? Oh, 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 my, I'm glad you could come. <laughs> well, I've missed it. Here, I thought you could do with some decent booze for a chance. Oh, you cheeky thing, Clay. <laughs> Congratulations, mate. You don't deserve it, you know. Hey, don't talk so much, I might hear you. Oh, how champagne. Oh, Thanks, champagne. Mike, very much. Well, that's something about Baldwin. When he does out, he does it in style. <laughs> to Ruth. As well you know. I wouldn't have thought engagement parties were your scene. Yes. You never gave me the impression you believed in him. Oh, I do. For other people. <laughs> All right. Thank Fine. you. <laughs> yes, thank you, love. Thank you. Right. Has everybody got a glass? No. No. Come on, then, get one. All right, let's have a bit of bush, then, shall we? <laughs> You know, when a, one of your mates is going to get married, it's always a cause for a celebration, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But when that girl he's getting wed to is also a friend of yours, well, that's just great. Yeah, yeah. In our case, the two happy people there are not just friends of mine, they're friends of everybody in this room. Yeah. So I want you to raise your glasses to the future happiness of the two happy people, Alf and Reenie. Yeah. Alf, Alf and Reenie. Come, oh, Come on in, speech, mate. Go on, speak to Well, I've only one very short word to say, and that's thanks. Uh, first of all, thanks to Len for those words. Thanks to you all for being here. Thanks for the presence. And most of all, thanks to Rini. Because if she'd not said yes, well, there'd be no to celebrate. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Hey, when's the big day off? I've got to get my hair done. Oh, yeah, have you decided yet? Uh, well, no, we haven't, actually. No, there's no rush. There's no need to bother. Ah, 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 thanks for the show. Enjoy it.